Hi guys and welcome to another video. Today I'll be delizing the i7 3770K and replacing the thermal paste with liquid metal in the hope of getting better thermals and therefore overclocking potential. Then I'll be talking about the results. So I'm running a Be Quiet Pure Rock CPU cooler, a budget oriented cooler with a max TDP of 150 watts at 4.5 gigahertz, about 1.2. 248 volts. It keeps the CPU around 60 degrees C when gaming, but running Prime 95 is another story. The 120mm cooler fan maxes out about 1500 rpm and sometimes reaches almost 1600 rpm, and the temperatures instantly rise to about 80 degrees and then eventually exceed around 95 degrees and then crashes. I'm not surprised really, as this again is a budget cooler, so I decided to go down the CPU delidding route. And just to let everyone know now, it was well worth it, albeit the risks involved, which I'll talk about later. I also wanted to see if it would help with the 9 degrees Celsius temperature delta that I have with this processor. Okay, so taking the PC apart, I'll go through each component as I take it out. So the memory is a Corsair Vengeance Pro Silver. It's two 8GB sticks, so 16GB running in dual channel. I run it 2133 MHz CL10 at 1.5 volts. Okay, the graphics card is the MSI GTX 1060 Gaming X Plus. Taking out the cooler, now it's a nightmare because of the fan clips. I can't take the cooler off with the fan on, and I can't take the fan off without taking the GPU and memory out first, so that's why I did it in that order. So I'm taking the fan off and I'm taking the cooler out. Okay, this is the dealer tool that I used. I got it cheap off eBay and it comes with a razor. So this is the risky part, so do it at your own risk. I'm not responsible for any damage caused, so please take care when you're doing this. It's easy to damage the processor or completely brick it, so please be careful when doing this. So I'm going to go through it step by step. So place the CPU in, be careful of the components on the back of the CPU. Tightly loosen the screw with your hand, then with the Allen key, then continue to tighten. It'll be quite difficult because the IHS has been held on by adhesive, but eventually it'll come loose. Then use the blade to pry the rest of it off. I bent the blade slightly towards the IHS, so if I was to cut anything it would be the IHS, not the PCB. But yeah, be careful not to cut the PCB because you don't want to ruin any traces. Now I needed to reuse the D-Lid tool to help get it off, and then the blade again and then eventually it came off.
Okay, so clean the paste and the adhesive off the IHS and the dye and as much as you can off the substrate. I'll try to cut as much of the remaining adhesive so that it's flat on the substrate. So this should be fine. So after looking at the thermal paste you can see it's really dry and it's just not very efficient which is why a liquid metal should hopefully do a better job. So for liquid metal I use Cool Laboratories Liquid Ultra. So clean the dye and at chest with alcohol wipes to get the marks and grease off. So now after I've done that, the dye is now really shiny. Only use a bit of liquid metal, spread a thin layer on both the dye and on the IHS on the pots where the dye would touch it. The liquid metal is electrically conductive so be careful not to get it around any electronics. But with this processor however there's no small components near the dye so you don't need to worry about that as much. Because some processors have the components near the dye and you'd have to cover those components with nail varnish or something similar to stop the liquid metal shorting components out. Okay now I'm finished, I'm not going to reseal the IHS onto the substrate because it will create a bigger gap between the IHS and dye which could impact on the thermals. Okay now I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to put a chip back in the motherboard. I tried putting a chip in first and then placing the IHS on top but eventually I decided to place the IHS on the substrate beforehand and I place it in the socket. So I held the CPU down with my finger to stop the IHS moving and I closed the retention clip which would hold it in place. So there we go, that's now finished. Okay, just so I could test the PC if it worked, not really quickly, I put the CPU cooler with some thermal paste on the CPU and I just held it in place while I switched PC on and that's fine for a short amount of time and just a temporary testing I didn't want to put all the computers together again just in case it didn't work and I'd have to keep taking it apart and then put it back together again um, and I know how much hassle that is as I explained earlier so I just literally just placed the CPU cooler on the CPU just to see if the computer booted up and which it did, so really happy that it worked, so I managed to boot into desktop. Okay, so after finding out that the PC now works, I uh, took the cooler off, cleaned it with the alcohol wipes and cleaned the IHS with the wipes as well. I put thermal paste on the cooler and IHS, 
and fix everything back together. Okay, so time for the results and conclusion. So before the test, I ran the processor at 4.5 GHz at 1.248 volts, which is pretty good considering I'm using budget air cooling. So in Prime 95, on the maximum heat setting, the temperatures would suddenly jump to 80 degrees and then climb to 95 degrees to 100 degrees and the system would crash. This is because the thermal paste is not that conductive compared to liquid metal, which is why there's such a high jump in temperature initially. So after the D-Lid, I tried 4.6 GHz at 1.272 volts, so an extra 100 MHz and a bit more voltage. So using Prime 95, the temperatures would jump to 65 degrees Celsius and slowly reach 75 degrees Celsius on the hottest core, and it never went more than that, and the rest of the cores stayed at around 70 degrees. The cooler fan would only run at 1150 RPM, as opposed to being maxed out at 1600 RPM at 4.5 GHz before the D-Lid. So not only have I got a higher frequency, I've got a lower fan RPM and lower temperatures. So then I tried 4.7 GHz at 1.328 volts. I definitely wouldn't want to run at this voltage with the original thermal paste between the Dyn IHS, because I was already getting to 100 degrees at 1.248 volts with lower frequency. Also, the reason why I didn't get thermal runaway like I did before is because the liquid metal actually has a better thermal conductivity at higher temperatures. I was basing my results off the hottest core, but unfortunately the temperature delta still existed, but on different cores to before the D-Lid. But this just shows that there are many variables that can affect the results. It could have been because I could have applied a different pressure of liquid metal compared to the paste that I was on before. I could have aligned the IHS differently on the die or on the substrate. The IHS also is not perfectly flat. The IHS could have had more pressure on different parts of the die, which could have caused the temperature delta on different cores. But I could have lapped the IHS to fix the issue, but I didn't really want to be doing that. Finally, I could have tightened the cooler differently to what I did before. So all of these variables affected the results. Finally, the Cinebench scores. I scored 1847 on Cinebench R20 and 867 on Cinebench R15. It actually outperforms the stock 4770K by 45 points according to this. So I hope you found this video informative. Please leave a like if you like the video, comment what you thought about the video and subscribe if you like my content. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.